be a part of something that has gone on for a long, long time here yeah, in this congregation. Man. Uh, we've had the pleasure to come over a few times for the various meetings, uh, and uh, we, we are thankful that there is a sound congregation in our area yeah, that is holding up the light of God's Word, Amen. holding up the truth. Amen. As was stated earlier, there's too, too many places that have left the truth. Amen. They've Amen. left their first love. What they're preaching has nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. Come on, preach on. Amen. We, uh, you know, we are very fortunate that God loved us and sent his son. Amen. He gave us his word to guide us. As was mentioned earlier, we ought to be thankful we're not in the Old Testament. Amen. So we, we, just, we hit about 8 billion people in the world recently. Yeah. Yeah. And if we were living in the Old Testament, there are a lot of them that would not be here today. Amen. We, we need to understand that the gospel has a purpose. It has a purpose to save souls, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Jesus said he came to seek and save that which is lost, yeah. Amen. and that's what we should be doing as well. Yeah. This, this uh, great subject matter for this lectureship, the challenge of the Great Commission, taking the gospel to a lost and dying world. So many times we think that means giving somebody money on the other side of the world. That's not what it means. Amen. He's talking to your family, your neighbor, your, your co worker. Right, that's right. Until we love God enough to tell people about Him, yeah, yeah. we got a problem. That's we got a problem. Oh, we'll talk about the Cowboys. We'll, well, we'll talk about the Rangers. Well, we'll talk about whatever your high school team is. Well, but are we talking about God? Yes, sir. Good question. The question this hour is of um, Acts 5, verse 38 through 42. I know he said 30 minutes earlier. I said hour. Maybe hour and a half. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Come on. We're going to get to Acts 5, 38 through 42 in just a minute. But before we do, what we want to do is go back and look at the context just a little bit. I'm sure that other people have covered some of these subjects, so I won't spend all day on it. But I do want to bring the context into play for what we're going to discuss in Acts 5, 33 through 42. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, the gospel is preached. Some 3,000 souls obey the gospel. They repented of their sins and were baptized into Christ. Beautiful message. The Lord's added to the church daily those being saved. When you uh, read in Acts chapter 3, you learn about Peter and John. And they're going up to the temple mount. And they heal a man who is lame since childhood. Forty years he's been lame. Forty years. He, you know, this man probably was wanting alms from them, gifts. He wanted finance. We probably have a lot of people still asking us for that today. Amen. But Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But that which I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. He healed a man. Amen. He preached the gospel. Yes, sir. The verse that was quoted a little while ago. Uh, talking about the desire to repent. He said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, wiped away, washed away, gone. God will remember them no more. And so the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And from that, from helping a man who's been in trouble for 40 years, preaching the gospel, having about 5,000 souls added to the kingdom, chapter 4, 4 says, the people of the day got mad. Well, they were upset. Come on. Come Can you believe that? You helped somebody and they got mad. Lord, well, in verses 1 through 3 of chapter 4, we're told the chief priest, the captain of the temple, the, the, the military force of the temple mount, the Sadducees, they were greatly disturbed. They were upset. They were agitated that the apostles taught about Jesus Christ and resurrection from the dead. They were upset. They were angry. And so they laid hands on them, and they put them in jail. They threw them in custody. The next day, these same leaders want to pull in Peter and John. They want to talk to them and find out what they're doing. Annas the high priest was there, Caiaphas and, and others. They all came, and they asked the question that we ought to be asking today. You want to talk about how we get rid of division, how we get rid of unity? I mean, get into unity? We all be one in Christ Jesus? They asked the question, by what authority have you done this? Man. Colossians 3.17 tells you what the answer to that is. By the authority of Jesus Christ, whatever we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. Man. And so by what authority? And really, that's the subject that we're talking about here today. Is it of God or is it of man? All right. That's the picture. And so 
they healed this man. They uh, had about 5,000 who repented. And so Peter began to answer this question and to, to deal with this problem. He even addressed the idea that they were upset that he, they helped a helpless man. Amen. Helped a helpless man. Listen. The gospel helps helpless people too. Amen. We cannot save ourselves. There's nothing we can do to earn our way to heaven. But God gave us the gospel but God. that can save our soul. Yeah. Romans 1.16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Yes, sir. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes, sir. Now listen, that word power, it's the word dunamis in the Greek. It's the mm -hmm. word translated or transliterated as dynamite. dynamite right? Mm -hmm. So, simple illustration. If I were to take a stick of dynamite today, hold it right here against my chest, set that fuse on fire, what's happening to my life? Yeah. About to oh, blow up. Time change, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Richard, you're getting it too. You're close enough. If I set that off, uh, everybody in this room is affected. Man. Millions are going to actually come over here and report on something for once. They're going to come over here, the MRT and whoever else. They're going to talk about what happened at Crazy Preacher that blew himself up. Before lunch, Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston's going to pick it up. And then ultimately, it'll be all over. AP Press will pick it up. The whole world will know about that Crazy Preacher. That is the power of the gospel. But in the positive, it should change my life. Everybody close to me and ultimately everyone around us. Man. Acts 17 and verse 6. The, the, the apostles were accused by those spiritual leaders of turning the world upside down. No, sir. They turned it right side up. Man. By preaching the gospel. Okay. Yeah. They preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so he told them, let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth whom you have crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. Yeah. Verse 12 of the same passage says, Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no name under heaven yeah, given among men yeah. by, by which we, we must, must repent. That's a problem. Yeah. You know, 1 Corinthians t talks about how these people were divided <laughs> under all these other names. You're not supposed to be divided under a certain man. You might appreciate somebody for their stance, their work. Mm -hmm. You can love them for their efforts. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can live their life in service to God, but we still don't follow them. They didn't save our souls. Man. Only Jesus Christ the righteous went to the cross for you and me. Yeah. Come on. It's only his blood that was shed, as was mentioned a moment ago. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Hebrews 9.22, and the blood of bulls and goats couldn't get it done. Yes, Hebrews 10 and verse 4. Yes, Man. It has to be Jesus Christ. Amen. And so these leaders had nothing to say. They knew a man had been healed. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. They knew it was true. In fact, they said there was no doubt. Everybody in Jerusalem knew it was clear and evident is one of the words of Jews. Mm -hmm. And they could not deny it. They Amen. could not deny that this was real, that this happened. And yet they wouldn't listen. Amen. We probably have talked to people to, about the gospel. The yes, way. sir. They, they tell you, yes, sir, that's what it says. Man. I, I see what you say. Amen. I know what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. But, but my mama, I don't care. <laughs> listen, I love my mama too. My mama passed away just a couple of months ago. I love my mom. Yeah. But my mama is not getting me to heaven. Yeah. Jesus Christ is getting me to heaven. Amen. And I'm thankful my mama was a faithful Christian. Amen. Amen. But she's a Christian not based on her mama either. Mm -hmm. On the gospel of Christ. Amen. That's what it is all about. Amen. So they said, why do you do this? Why do you speak in the name of Jesus? We told you to stop doing this. And Peter said, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you, you? or the God, yeah, yeah, yeah. you judge. Yeah. We cannot speak the things which we have. We cannot, but that means mm -hmm. that's what we have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Man. The things that we have seen and heard. Yeah. That's the gospel. Well, what they do? Well, they threaten them and let them go. Well, that didn't last long. Amen. You get to chapter 5, verses 12 and following. They're doing signs and wonders. And this time, instead of 3,000 or 5,000, it says multitudes mm -hmm. of both men and, and women. women are obeying the gospel. Yeah. Multitudes. Yeah. And you know what? That makes them even more angry. Right. They're even more frustrated. They, they don't understand what's going on here, especially when you're talking about the resurrection. Man. They don't want to hear a word about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we want to hear about it. 
Not because somebody dressed up in an Easter bunny outfit and gave out candy and we hunt eggs. That's not what it's about. What we're talking about is Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day. We died to our sins, are buried into his death, yeah. where we come in contact with the blood of the Lamb, Revelation 1 verse 5, and we're raised to walk in newness of life. That's what it's all about, Romans 6, verse 3 and 4. Yeah. They're upset about him preaching about Jesus and the resurrection. They said, didn't we tell you to stop that? Yes, sir. Yeah. I know in, in my life there's times people told me to stop something, and I, I kept doing it sometimes. <laughs> Listen, that's why we all need repentance. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, uh, some of us are like those mules earlier. Ned Ned and Jed, or whatever the names were. Ned and Jed. Hard-headed, stubborn, not willing to listen. Keep doing, keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, one of the good things about repentance is if I keep doing that over and over again, and I keep working on it, and I keep doing my best to change my life, and I change my life, I can be forgiven. Amen. And I can be forgiven again. Yes. Yeah. But I need to better. I better be keeping working on staying on that road. Amen. The fact is, uh, they arrested them again. They were angry. They're going to talk to them. But the angel of the Lord releases them this time. And the angel of the Lord said, "You go preach. You go back to the temple and you tell them what I told you to tell. Go preach." And so they go to preach, and uh, they start looking for these men. And uh, the report came to them and said, "Look, the men whom you put in prison." are standing in the temple and they're teaching the people. Well, what else would a preacher do? Amen. That's his job. What else would he do? Amen. I'm telling you, so he goes out to start preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And the, the, the captain and the officers brought them in and they asked them again, why? Why are you doing this? We told you to stop. Peter said, one of the most quaint, famous verses quoted in uh, the New Testament from this chapter in particular, verse 29, we ought to obey God rather, rather than men. men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's part of the problem with division in the church even today. People are more worried about what men think than what the gospel says. We need to quit worrying about pleasing some preacher and start pleasing the preacher. <laughs> well, well. God sent us, had a son and he was a preacher. Mm. Now let's, let's go to our text. I know that's a long introduction. But let's, let's get to our text, Acts chapter 5, verse 33 through 42. Uh, we were going to pick it up at verse 38. I want to start a little earlier so we get this context. It says, when they heard this, they were uh, furious and plotted to kill them. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version here. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. We're going to talk. That's what he says. All right? And he said to the men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody. There's a lot of people who rise up claiming to be somebody. Man. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain and all who obeyed him were scattered and it came to nothing. After this, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. Just like these other two. But if it is of God... You cannot overthrow it. Yes, sir. Man. Lest you be found to fight against God. If it's of God, you cannot overthrow it. That is still true to this day. Yeah. I mentioned a moment ago, 8 billion people on the face of the earth. we got a lot, a lot of people in this world worried to death that we're going to destroy the world. They haven't read Genesis chapter 6 through 9. Amen. Because God said... He's got this. Yeah. Man. He said, as long as time remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. Yes, sir. There's going to be seasons. Yes, sir. And the world will not be destroyed by man. Yeah. It's not going to be destroyed by flood. No. It's going to be destroyed by fire. Man. I know there's a group teaching that we're going to come back to this earth. Right. Those are people that don't live in West Texas. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. This, this sand, rice, well, rocks. come on, brother. Right? We're not coming back to this earth. We're going to go to a new heaven and a new, new earth that God has prepared for the same. So oh, that's 
We'll talk about that some other time. <laughs> but if it's from God, you cannot overthrow it. Mm. Verse 40. And they agreed with him. Yes, because that makes complete sense. Amen. And they called for the apostles and beat them. Well. And they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They've already said that multiple times. You quit preaching in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. Did that stop them before? Mm -hmm. No. It's not going to stop them now. Yeah. Should it stop us today? No. no. We need to stand up and preach the truth. Amen. I'm going to come back to this in just a minute. But if this plan that we're talking about today is of men, it will fail. Mm -hmm. It is not of men. It is of God, and his word will not end. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue. You can count on it. You can trust it. There's not much in this world you can trust, but you can trust the word of God. Man. You can believe it, obey it, and know where you're going to spend eternity because he tells us what to do. If it is God's plan, you cannot overthrow it. Amen, it's brother. You're going to fight against God. Now, Amen. This is not the first time somebody asked the question, is it of God or of men? And we can think of many in the, in the Bible. I'll just mention one in the New Testament. Matthew 21, 23. Yep. It says, uh, by the way, these are the same spiritual leaders. They're questioning Jesus at this time. They say, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? He answered, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John. Where was it from? Man. Heaven or men? Where did it come from? They were stuck, and they knew they were stuck. Because if they say it's of men, yes, all sir. the people are angry yes. because they thought John was a prophet. You yes, know what? Sir. He was a prophet. Yes, man. He's the one that made the way straight for the Lord. Yes. He's the one who made things right. He's the one who cleared out the path. Uh -huh. oh, a few years ago, I was speaking on a, 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 a lectureship down in South Texas, and I'm coming back up by 35. I get almost to the Austin area. I started noticing that there was no cars on the road, none. And I started feeling like something was wrong. <laughs> I-35, I'm yes, sir. down that yes, road. Yes, sir. Yes, that sir. was a parking lot. And there were no cars on the road. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I said, like, man, something is going on. And as I started getting closer, I went by that Bass Pro shop and kept moving. And then I noticed police cars were parked at all the entrances and exits. And then I was like, oh, something really is going wrong here. <laughs> what is this? I kept going. And as I'm going, finally I start to see the problem. Here comes like a hundred motorcycles. <laughs> then there was a hundred Jeeps. And then there's a, a motorcade. And then there's five limousines. And then the reverse. It goes just the opposite with all those. There's three, four hundred vehicles. I said, I bet that's a president. Man. I called one of my, uh, don't, don't, don't talk on the phone while you're driving. I called one of my friends on the phone. I said, hey, is the president... In Austin today? Yeah, he's going out there. He's going to go to Dell and some other places. Oh, the president just went by. Here I am, crazy. Here comes President Obama coming by. I'm standing there with my phone, videotaping. <laughs> you know, there had to be a dozen snipers watching me seeing what I was doing. Out there. I'm the only car on the road. Wow. Me and the president. Wow. Yeah, Come on, Shows what they thought of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Listen, about... By what authority? We're going to do this by the word of God. John came to prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight, just like we do for the president. That's a good thing. John prepared the way. He made things ready. They thought him of a, of a prophet. He was a prophet. But they answer, no, 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 that, that's from God. Then they condemn themselves. Yes, sir. Because they needed to repent and be baptized. Man. They needed to do what God told them to do. And so um, the message of the apostles is, is something that they should have listened to. It's something that they should have listened to with Jesus Christ. The leaders wanted to know by what authority. Listen, if they said it was from God, they're condemned. But it was from God. The message of the apostles, Acts chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5, were of God. The message of John, the baptism of John, was of God. The message that Jesus was preaching was of God. The message that we must preach today must be of God. Man. And when we preach that truth, it will save souls. But you know what? This has been a problem since the very beginning. 
Now, we don't have time today to go over each one of these, but you know these events in history. In Genesis chapter 3, God said you shall not eat yeah. or even touch the fruit of that tree. Yeah. Right. Satan told that lie, that knot in the devil's tail. Come on. And uh, what did he say? He said you will not surely die. Yeah. Oh, no. They said, you know, Eve saw that fruit. She saw that it was uh, good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and would make one wise unto salvation. The same three things Jesus was tempted with in Mark, Matthew 4, Luke 4. Same three things we're tempted with, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the vainglory or pride of life. The same three things. And she took it, she ate it, and she gave it to her husband who also ate. Man. Yes, sir. Sin and death entered the world. He said, no, you won't die. Yes, you will. Amen. Entered the world and sin has been in the world ever since. Right. Genesis chapter 4. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel were told by God to bring an offering. Now, what was that offering? We're not told exactly. It doesn't matter. We don't need to argue about it. But Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4 says that by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. He did what he was told. Come on, man. What did Cain do? He got mad. God respected Abel and his offering. He did not respect Cain and his offering. And so Cain was angry, and God told him, why are you angry? Why is your countenance falling? Why is your face falling? Why are you so sad? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Yes, it's a rhetorical question. That question comes to us today. If we do well, will we be accepted? Yes, sir. Yes. We must do what the gospel teaches. Nadab and Abihu. Leviticus chapter 10, what did they do? They brought profane fire that God had not commanded. Did God accept it? No, he took their life. In 2 Samuel 6, verse 6 and 7, David gets the bright idea, I'll make a new cart, I'll get me two, two oxen that never pulled a cart, we're going to take this, this ark of the covenant home. No, you should have read the laws. You know, every king was supposed to, the day he took office, he's supposed to begin to read and write his own copy of the law so that he knows what's right and can lead the people according to God's plan. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he forgot that the Levites, and particularly a certain group of the Levites, Should've were to carried. carry this off. Oh, Amen. Oh, oh, but that, those oxen stumbled. Others are stuck out his hand. I'm glad I'm not there because my human rationale probably would have wanted to do the same thing. Oh, I can't let this ark fall. But it's wrong. Sometimes you can't trust your own feelings. He stuck out his hand and got killed. Yeah. Listen, we could go on and on, but the fact of the matter is when man says, I'm going to do it my way, if, if it's of man, we will fail. Yeah, if it's of God, of God, you cannot fight against it. That's right. It is futile to do so. But when we look at the world around us, we see a group of people who do not care if it came from God or man. Man. I mean, you think about the problems in our world today. Uh, homosexuality, transgenderism is so huge right now. Pedophilia and some of the things that have been said and done in recent days. All kinds of sexual sin and many other things. In fact, there are several brands, major brands that are in the news this last couple of weeks about promotion of transgenderism. Uh, the Cheez-Its box. They put RuPaul on the Cheez-Its box. Come on. Do you believe that? No. RuPaul. We're going to put, put that on the box. Bud Light, you shouldn't be drinking that anyway. Bud Light is, is under attack because they put another man on the box dressed up like a woman. Come on. Nike, did you see Nike? If you were a woman, you should be offended. The, the, the face of Nike for this year for a female is a man dressed in women's clothing. That is the society we're living in today. Uh, television, movies, filled with filth. Uh, promoting homosexuality. And if you stand up and act like a man, well, that's toxic masculinity. Yeah. Oh, calm down. Oh, God. Use your words. You don't need that stick. Come on. Come on Listen, we got to be men. Amen. And, and women need to stand up with courage and stand up against their friends as well. But the home is under attack. Drag queens on snack boxes. Oh, this is crazy. But what's uh, sad is many Christians do not have the backbone well, to stand on. up against it. Come on, preach. They will come not on, preach. teach the truth. They will not change their habits. They will not uh, uh, change the things they participate in. 
participate in. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, evil companions corrupt good morals. Well, except mine, my friends are okay. No, they're not. You need to choose Christian friends, people who help you get to heaven, a spouse who's going to be your partner as you walk down the road to eternal life. We need to make sure we make good choices like the apostles. We must have the boldness to say we must obey God rather than men. We need to say we cannot speak but the truth found in the pages of the Bible. Man. A couple weeks ago, I was on Facebook looking for some things. And um, I was in, in part, I was looking for all the speaker schedule for, for this event. And uh, I was looking around, and, and one of the things that popped up was a, a statement from Brother Marshall Keeble. I thought, boy, this is just perfect with what we're talking about today. Uh, Brother Keeble uh, was at a gospel meeting, and he was preaching some hard things, and people were getting angry. And they were upset. And so he said this. The Bible is right. You can leave this meeting and go home mad. But the Bible's still right. Mm. You can fuss at Keeble all night. But the Bible's right. Yeah. All men can die and go to hell. But the Bible's still right. Amen. Now listen. It's still true to this day. Yeah. We can be angry. You can be angry at Wilson. You can be angry at Oldham. You can be mad at anybody you want to be mad at. Yeah. But the truth is the Bible is still the truth. Right. The Bible says that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. In Genesis chapter 1, God created them male and female. A woman is not a man. A man is not a woman. And you can't be a butterfly no matter what you want to identify as. Amen. Doesn't matter if somebody likes it or not. The Bible is still right. The world can tell us we can marry whoever we want, whenever we want, however we want, as many times as we want. Male, female, animal. Listen, our world is perverted. Amen. But the Bible says one man and one woman. Yes. That's God's plan. When, when Jesus was asked about it in Matthew 19, he didn't say, well, today, here's what it is, but here's what it was in the past. That's not what he said. He said, from the beginning, it was not so. Man. God intended it to be one man and one woman. That's the plan. And if it doesn't matter if it makes people mad. It's still right. Amen. Romans chapter 3 and verse 4 says, let God be true and every man Amen. a lie. Is it of God or is it of man? By what authority? It better be by the authority of Christ because the Bible is right. Listen, we can stand up for the truth. It may cost us something. It may be difficult. I don't see anybody beating anybody right now. That may come. But folks, we need to be willing to do what's right regardless. Mm. We're going to stand for the truth. Amen. We're going to put on the whole armor of God and stand and fight. Amen. You don't put on the garment or the, the armor to look pretty and stand in the corner. You put on the armor to go fight. Amen. We're going to stand and fight against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Folks, we've got to run with endurance. The race is set before us. Looking yes, unto Jesus, the oh, author and finisher of our faith. Yes, the That's the one. But who for the joy... Yes, Set before him, yes, man. The cross, despising his shame, he now right. sat down right. Right. at the right hand of the throne Come of God. On. He's the authority. Yeah. He's the one we're following. Yeah. We should be asking, is it of God or is it of man? And then do what God has said. Yes, That's, right. man. That's our plan. Amen. First Corinthians sixteen fourteen says, "Watch, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be brave. Be strong. Be a man. Man, stand up for something. Yes, Have a backbone. Yes, Don't cower." When your friends say, well, you guys think you're the only ones going to heaven. Listen, there's a lot of people who claim to be a member of the church that aren't going to heaven. Man. <laughs> Jesus said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father. We have to be faithful and obedient. Brethren, if it's of God, it's worth the fight. If it's of God, we need to stand up. The Bible is right. And that's not changing anytime soon.